everybody, my name is Joby Horrigan and I'm a volunteer stitcher with Bergen Mass Task Force. Um, we have been making cloth masks uh, with elastic to um, for the hospital workers, local hospital workers, to go over the N95 as an extra layer of protection. Um, and we have been making these masks for a couple of weeks now, um, but the lovely Victoria Perot, who gave great instructions on how to make that particular mask, um, has asked me to give instructions on how to make almost the exact same mask, but with cloth ties instead. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to do that. Hi everybody, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the supplies that um, you'll need. Obviously, we're still using our six by nine um, uh, rectangle of 100% cotton fabric. And then we're going to cut out strips for the ties. And these should be two inches wide by 42 inches long um, so that you can create the obviously the long ties and they have enough room to um, go around the um, everybody's heads. Um, you're still gonna need a six inch piece of wire um, as well. Uh, so let's get started. So hi everybody. So now I'm gonna tell you what to do to iron your um, uh, 42 by two inch um, strips. Uh, and I know the ironing can be a little bit complicated, but it really helps uh, make the stitching faster later. So we're going to fold our two inch strip in half and we're gonna iron the whole length, all right, all the way. And then we're going to open that up and we're going to fold into the crease halfway and iron that instead. It's a little tricky, but take your time, you can do it. You'll get faster at it. And then once that side is done, you do the other side the same way. So ultimately you end up with a half inch piece like this, okay? And then what I do is I find the halfway mark. This will help you later when you're stitching. If you find the halfway mark and just give yourself a little iron of the halfway mark and then that will help you later when you're stitching. Okay, everyone, so now I have my two uh, rectangle pieces of fabric and I've put the right sides together and I am going to stitch up the two long sides. You don't need to back stitch. And as you can see, I just line my, um, uh, the edge of my uh, presser, my foot um, to the edge of the fabric. And again, don't bother back stitching. All right. And then we'll, of course, do the other side. And then you can just turn, turn it. And then it's up to you, depending on time-wise, you can either finger press it. I've got my ironing board set up over here, so I'm just gonna give these two seams a quick press. Hi everybody, here I am just giving my two long seams a quick press. Okay. Great. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the wire into the top half and I'm doing this before I put the ties on. I found that it really was the best way um, to sort of mass produce these. Again, I just want to emphasize you're using six inches of wire and you want to make sure, I don't know if you can see it there, that you have folded over the ends of your wire um, and press them in. Uh, you really want to make sure you do this because you don't want the wires poking through um, the fabric um, after multiple washings. Okay, so basically I'm just going to stick this into the end of my, and I have gotten to the point where I have not been, to save time, I have not been pinning these. Um, I've just been uh, uh, stitching them in, but if it's helpful to you, it's really great. You just want to catch the end 
to keep it in place. And um, these wonderful silk pins are great and you can stitch right over them. But I am going to be Speedy Demon here and I am going to put it on zigzag. And then I am just going to basically make a casing with my zigzag here all across that edge capturing my wire and stitch it all the way to the end. So now that you have uh, your wire zigzagged in there, um, I tend to do this in stages so that I, like I have a pile here of um, uh, rectangles that I have stitched all of that into. And that way you can sort of um, assembly line this. But the next thing we want to do is we want to um, create our tucks. So you're going to, this is the same as it was in the other pattern. You're just going to put pin in three tucks. And again, I've been eyeballing it. You'll get good at this. And again, I love these silk pins if you have them because you can stitch right over them. So we're gonna pin both sides and then we take one of our things and one of our ties and remember where we um, made our little mark, our halfway mark, you're gonna place that in the middle pleat, right up against the middle pleat, right where you have that um, middle bit of pressing done. And you're gonna fold it over, right? And then I just repin over the top of this where I have pinned my pleats. All right, and then that is nicely gonna incorporate everything. Okay, everybody, now you can see I've pinned both sides uh, with my pleats. And the next um, thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually stitch my ties, all right? And it's up to you how you wanna, you know, close up your side there. But I just, oops, switch it to straight stitch. I am gonna back stitch here. And then I am just going to stitch all the way down it takes a minute and you want to get as close to the edge as you can obviously while making sure that you're catching both pieces. And then when you get to this point, you just wanna sort of hold it together on the edges. And then you're just going to stitch through everything and then keep going to your end. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I have stitched the other side. And um, as you can see, I just stitched right over my pins. Um, and just so you know, I'm gonna remove the pins. And at this point, just because we're gonna stitch all the way around, you can double check, but if by some chance you've missed part of the underside, you're gonna have an opportunity to go back over it again. So now we are going to put our little pleat. It's our little uh, pleat for under the chin to improve the fit, all right? And I just hold on to that if it's easier for you to pin that down. And then we're gonna start at the beginning of that edge that you have the pleat in, and we're gonna straight stitch as close to the edge as you can, all right? And we're gonna stitch right over our pleat, and we're gonna keep going all the way around 
so that we get a good double stitch, all the top stitch all the way around. And then we're gonna go over the wire side, but we're not gonna zigzag. We're gonna straight stitch. This is just like the uh, mask that Victoria showed you how to do. We're gonna straight stitch along there. And then we're going to go right here. And then our last, our beginning seam there with the one pleat, we'll go across. And then we'll back stitch right there. Now you can clip all your threads. And there you have it. So again, everybody, here's your finished mask. I really think that um, uh, they turn out great and they're nice and sturdy. We've stitched, top stitched twice around the actual mask itself. Um, I only stitched the ties once. Um, I think that that's fine. Um, and again, when I'm doing this, I find that if I produce a bunch of the uh, rectangles with the wire in, and then I go and I pin a bunch and then I sew. If I assembly line it that way, it really seems to make the process go quickly and they're really sturdy. And uh, again, it's been such an amazing thing um, to uh, help these hospital workers and these masks. They've just been so appreciative. So uh, if we can start to crank out some of these that are the tie kind, I think that would be amazing. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I've never done an instructional video before, um, but hopefully uh, this will get you going and you'll be able to uh, be zooming through these like crazy yeah. in no time. Thanks so much.